Hello, listeners and viewers on YouTube. Uh, Dylan here today. Uh, I've got two very special guests uh, to have a lovely Sega oriented chat. Um, long time listeners or, or uh, regular viewers will recognize one of the faces in the room. So let's say hello to Dean, Dean Mortlock from Sega Powered. How are you doing, Dean? Hi, Dylan. How are you? Yeah, not too bad. Dylan. It's been a while, hasn't it? It's been a little it's while. Gosh. Yeah, it's been about a year, I guess, almost. Well, nine months, 10 spurs, but yeah, but it's been a busy nine year, months. but yeah. Nine months, yeah. So for people who don't know, um, me and Dean had a lovely chat. So go, go and have a look at that. Uh, and we were talking about the Kickstarter for Sega Powered. So part yeah. of this kind of drive to get retro back on the shelves. Um, how is it all going, Dean? How is it all going over there? Um, it's going about as well as we could expect, really. It's, it's the, the, the feedback's been really good. People seem to like what we're doing. We're enjoying doing it. Um, we're five issues in now. We've done some really cool things. We've managed to kind of, you know, bring some unusual covers and some interesting features. And um, yeah, like I said, as long as people enjoy it and we can still enjoy doing it, then we'll keep doing it. Obviously, issue five is what we're here to talk about, which is the one mm -hmm. with, the, uh, with the demo CD, courtesy of um, that gentleman down there. This gentleman, the, the elephant in the room. No, just kidding. Just kidding, Daniel. Just kidding, Daniel. So this is Daniel from Wave Games. Give us a wave, Dan. Give us a wave. Um, hey. <laughs> wave, the wave giving the wave. The wave giving the wave. So I don't know if you want to give us a little introduction as to what you do at Wave and what Wave do. I feel like I answer this question differently every single time. Nice. Uh, but basically what we do is we publish new games for old systems so for example uh primarily dreamcast at the moment mm -hmm. um, but we've been looking at other platforms um, as well um but sort of prior the primary purpose of what we do is to basically take a game which someone has developed they've spent years of their life on and give it a bigger audience than it would usually get mm, through that's through very lovely. various different means so it was bound to happen wasn't it you obviously you know got sega powered on the shelf and you know we've we we yeah, grew up in a sure. we grew up in an era where you used to get demo discs on the front of you know the official PlayStation mag and all the dream you know the, all the DC um, magazines back then. How did you guys actually get together and start this? Because you know it's not something that's a natural thing. <laughs> I don't think it's a natural thing that Wave would have thought like, oh well, you know, let's get a demo disc on the um, you know on a on a printed mag. How did it all actually come about? We met in a live stream, if you can believe that. <laughs> okay um so i can't remember the, exactly which live stream it was but we were both watching the same stream at the same time were you um, just dming in the chat or was it one way it you was, yeah yeah it? just publicly in the chat yeah it no. was izzy it was uh, intrepid izzy that's it yeah izzy um it was uh oh a random game of rhythm that's it yeah yeah i mean we're talking over a year ago now so how could you I forget our first date <laughs> um, yeah they were just um we were just sort of chatting chatting with with the host um via via the sort of the chat on on the youtube stream and uh, i obviously knew who sega power were or what sega power was um and who dean was and um we kind of just started chatting um sort of through twitter and and various other means and just Kind of, it was kind a good of, idea. Yeah. yeah, it kind of kind of just became what it is now uh, over the course of the last year. That yeah. is it. So yeah. yeah, sorry. Sorry, you know, all I was going to say was it was it was um obviously we were doing Sega Powered and we were covering Dreamcast stuff and mm -hmm. and Dan Wave were doing Dreamcast games. So it was kind of you know we obviously there was a lot to talk about and it was kind of the end of the year January time when Daniel was talking about doing the sort of year of Dreamcast and releasing, you know, a number of Dreamcast games across the whole of 2022. That's that right. I, that we kind of said, I think we probably, it was pretty much the same time. We thought, you know, this, this would be, a, there's a demo disc in there somewhere. You know, we, we should talk about yeah. this. And it took a little, it took a, a number of months to kind of get into place because obviously people were finishing off their titles and the last thing you want to do to is approach somebody who's finishing off a game and say, look, mm. do you mind doing a demo as well? Because it's all one, mostly one pe person team. So, you know, it's a lot of work. Yeah, um, definitely is. So it just took a little bit of time to kind of get through all that and work out what we could do and which games we could do. And soon it's as a very asked, generous offering. I mean, you know, I've got um, the copy of the mag in front of me, and you mentioned, 
Intrepid Izzy there. You've also got Shadow Gangs, so it's like a yeah. Shinobi style um, mm-hmm. platformer. That looks great. Uh, something called Driving Strikers, which looks very similar to a very popular online <laughs> game at the minute. Um, <laughs> and something called Flea, which looks very similar to a very popular indie game one of my favorite games um super meat boys so mm-hmm. getting all of those four together on a disc must have take, taken some doing really um what what was sort of involved and you know how did you get all of those demos and and things together daniel uh, a lot of begging uh, to, to, to the devs <laughs> <laughs> i mean we've been talking about this this demo disc for a good while now um and it originally started off as, a, oh, wouldn't that be nice? But obviously ne- it could never happen because it's so much work. Um, and then we sort of said, well, may- maybe it could happen. So I started approaching some of the developers that, that we work with as Wave. And I said, you know, is this something that you'd be interested in? Yes or no? Most of them said, yes, obviously, very interested. Mm-hmm. Um, then the follow-up question is, can you produce a demo in time? Mm-hmm. Uh, most pretty much all of them said yeah as if uh you know we don't have enough time for that but um with with a lot of coercing um we managed to get the four the four demos um technically we actually had five at one point um that's a that's an exclusive oh well um, but it wasn't enough space on the disc oh so it's just bumper pack yeah. see it was just so you know bumper pack full of goodness you couldn't even get a fifth on there yeah absolutely um we've got a load of videos and whatnot on there too trailers mm. nice so, i mean it's it's more more than some of the demos that used to come come out 20 years ago mm-hmm. yeah it's yeah. pretty packed yeah yeah I was, but... I was looking 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 through some of them earlier and um a few of them have just got like one demo so, uh, a couple with like two or three and some trailers um yeah it's pretty pretty well packed in there yeah so the yeah. developers then did they um i mean back in our day demo discs were a bit a, a little bit of a lifeline because i had a ps2 at the time and getting actually playing new games was really difficult so those demo mm-hmm. discs sort of gave you and some of them were so big they sort of you know you just play the same demo again and again like you, yeah. you know you'd be happy with that rather than you know um well in place of not being able to buy the full game um the mm. developers then did they not really take to did they not see it as a good way to get their product out there because with a lot of indie games okay they are mm. lower priced than than other games at the moment but i think yeah. me personally i think i would appreciate to to try a lot of them you know before before buying and that's something oh. that you don't really get a lot of even on the online. oh they yeah they were very very pleased with the idea and they were all on board but it, it was just a case of um finding the time to do it because as dean said a lot of a lot of these developers it's it's a, a kind of one person working in their free time kind of situation um and it's it's hard enough to develop a game and then try and get it out to the world um but yeah. then add in all of the other jobs that you have to do now like uh you know responding to queries and uh uh promoting themselves on social media and and you know alongside having a a full-time job a lot of the time mm. it's uh it's, it's it's a it's a very hard um very hard job that's true i've i've dabbled a little bit with game creation and it just sucks just sucks the time mm. out of you it's just yeah it's unbelievable and you know yeah. the amount of work that that these guys do to get oh, for sure. out oh, there yeah. is, sure. is is phenomenal um let's talk a little bit about the games then um i guess the lead game is shadow gangs what what sort of by, mm. by jake sorry i have to name them jkm corp um yeah. what attracted you to that game i mean there's some very obvious things about it <laughs> that sega fans would like um, um but what it looked you know, awesome what, it looked awesome <laughs> it does look awesome it is uh, it's really good it's really yeah good. So, so you guys have played it extensively then so what in in a nutshell then how would you how would you pitch that game how would you pitch that game to our how I would pitch it, uh, it's a fast paced um, action hack and slash in, in the vein of Shinobi. It's not exactly the same as Shinobi, Shinobi by any means, but there's there's a clear influence there, uh, particularly the arcade version. That's very important to note mm-hmm. um, because it's not really much like the Mega Drive versions, which run a little bit kind of slower, 
slower paced gameplay, shall we say. It's very fast, it's unforgiving, uh, and it's it's very much for your seasoned hack and slash player. Dean, were you a big Shinobi fan back in the day? Obviously, um, like you got to review these things when they came out in the nineties. Were you a fan of Revenge of the Shinobi? Uh, you know, um, Shinobi Three. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It kind of a little bit. I mean, the the, the problem with being on something like Sega Power is back in, back in the day. That's a phrase I use a lot recently. Um, <laughs> back in the day, um, is that you you played a lot of games, but you didn't play a lot of them very. Unless you're reviewing it, you didn't play a lot of them for very long because you, you were dealing yeah. with sometimes 30 40 games every month but in the, in the peak when there was a lot of releases so you what you tended to do was you, you played everything that came in but in, in mm. sometimes in only five minute bursts so there was very few games that you played to any great degree mm. um examples of things like virtual fighter or sega rally that were always on in the office or football games tended to play a lot in but um yeah i mean i played it obviously and, and, and i liked it but um um, it's been a long time since I, I, I think I played it intermittently over the years, but never, mm. never kind of really got, got my teeth in it. Like Daniel says, as soon as I loaded up, I thought, oh, this, 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 this is definitely a Shinobi feel there. If you want <laughs> the Shinobi yeah, series, yeah, for sure. then you'll definitely, you'll definitely got this lot here. Like, definitely. Yeah. You, um, you a Shinobi fan then, Daniel? Um, to be honest, the Mega Drive one, I always found a little bit slower paced. Um, mm -hmm. and I, I discovered the arcade version. Uh, I suppose you could say later in life, um, probably probably five ten years ago, something like that. Um, and I realised, yeah, this is pretty pretty awesome. It um, was it was sort of groundbreaking at the time, really. It sort of helped establish Sega's name in the, the late I think late eighties. I think the first for the sure Shinobi for sure. came out, and then I think Revenge of Shinobi might have been ninety or ninety one. Oh, I'm talking about I thirty see, years I ago I now. Have, I have vague memories of playing a Master System Shinobi game, but the I can't Master, remember. Yeah, what, um, it was yeah. so. Yeah, Shinobi was first on the Master System, so that got the yeah. port, and then the later, the later Shinobi games yeah. came, came. As well came as well as a game called the Ninja, which I thought was oh. related, but apparently it's like completely different. It is. Oh, I love the oh, I love the ninja. That was a cheap game as well. You know, me not having, not having many pennies yeah. back in the day. I think it was, was like a little, it was like a little guy like here on the screen somewhere, and you, <laughs> you, you, yeah, it was like an overhead um, overhead uh, perspective, wasn't it? Yeah, it was. Yeah, was you know, that was great. It was pretty great. The levels are short, but it was, you know, it did show off what the master system could do. I think do I probably paid about a pound for it back in the day. No, oh, that, that's bargain. You know, you wouldn't, <laughs> yeah. you wouldn't get it. You wouldn't get it no, for that no, now. No, you wouldn't no, get no. it for that now. But yeah, that one's definitely. So Shadow Gangs is looking really great. So that that that's the first one. Yeah, um, I love it. I'm, I love it to be honest. I mean, <laughs> Driving Strikers. It does. It's <clears> a lot like. A certain game called Rocket League. Are you guys? Do you guys play Rocket League much? Personally, per personally, not at all. My brother, who is also part of Wave, he's he's played quite a bit of it, so mm. he's been on sort of testing duty. Yeah. Um, where Driving Strikers really starts to shine though and come into its own is the on uh, is the online um, play, um, which is now working. I can confirm. Uh, Dreamcast a, online play. Dreamcast Lovely. online play. And also, this cross is it, play. yeah? yeah yes. Oh, play. my word. Oh, my um, word. So, I believe it's coming for PSP. Wow. Um, it's definitely coming for, for Windows and definitely coming for Linux. So, you've got your, your PC. And it's uh, cross platform. And it's cross, cross platform and cross platform. Unbelievable. Play. So, that is great. I think wow. that's where it's going to really shine because you can have a friend who doesn't have a Dreamcast, say, and you can have a match with them. Um, no problem at all. I always used to love those isometric driving games. So you know, like mm. Super Off Road and Rock mm. and Roll Racing and stuff like that. And I quite like the look of this because it's a bit like those kind of controls. But yeah. obviously you're trying to get a football in a goal. Um, yeah, so it's, and... it's, it takes a little, little bit of getting used to because your initial instinct is that when you're, when you're um, controlling a car... If the car's pointing this way and you want to go left, you turn left. <laughs> but it controls more like FIFA in that you you press the direction that you want to drive to. Mm -hmm. Once you once you get used to that, it's like, oh, this makes perfect sense. This is it. I mean, you know, you got to you got to see what happens. You know, get it online and see how people yeah. get on with it. But it looks, I think it looks really good. Dean, have you had a go at this one yet? Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> Excuse me. Yeah, I mean, um, 
we've we've been we've had the disc in various versions over the past few months to test and mm. and as soon as the disc came into the uh into the house yesterday i kind of sat down with the whole thing and played through everything and just made sure it all worked there was no bugs and it didn't crash um and yeah driving strikers it's 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 got potential i mean we, we put it on there because obviously it's not not a game that's even signed by wave it's, it's kind of hopefully it's going to happen down the line yeah and um, how long a game does on the demo how long is the match that people get on there it's three minutes yeah so you get a good three minutes of that yeah so you can choose one of this couple of sides and there's one i think there's one arena but there's more arenas in the final game yeah. there's a whole load of sort of leagues and tournament options in the final game but it's just a kind of one -off. i think i think you can play up to four players in the demo yeah it's a taste uh, guys tell me. yes taster so if you've got four controllers and three mates you can you can do it oh, it's obviously local it's not online on the demo i think it's going to be a good um like convention and um like uh I've I've got like sleepover party in my mind, but you know the modern equivalent of that. <laughs> <where> you... <laughs> yeah, lamp party kind of stuff would be, be yeah. great for that. Mm. Um, you know, the Dreamcast is a party console, isn't it? You know, it, yeah, I've, it really I've, is. Yeah. yeah, I've had the boys try and try and play some multiplayer stuff with me, and, and Power Stone too, and it's not gone amazing because the, <laughs> my my GDEMU is a cheap knockoff, so it tended to crash quite a lot. But you know, it's it has yeah. that essence and this looks like a great game for that. Mm. I think uh I think I think a lot of people will enjoy that one. Yeah, I have um, no doubt people are gonna really enjoy it. And it's got infinite replayability as well. It's it's not one of those where you play it once and then done, that's it. That's Back it. on the shelf for twenty years. Yeah. So that one's done by L D two K, sorry, and and reality <laughs> jump. So they're the guys yeah. that have brought you that. So yeah, it's it, again, it's another. It's just so impressive. I just how people develop stuff still for the Dreamcast. You know, we've spoken to the guys who made Xeno Crisis, and you know, mm. it's just and 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 the like. And it's just you know, yeah. it's an amazing thing. Um, going on to probably a ret a Sega retro fan's favorite genre would usually be a platformer. Mm. And you know, Intrepid Izzy. Would you? I mean, you know, Dean. Would you say that's probably the um, the figurehead, the the kind of the the leading the leading game on the disc? Um, <clears throat> I, I well, it, it, it's difficult, really, because I, I kind of we we were yes. very keen to make sure there wasn't, in, in essence, a one big game and several others. Yeah, because um, I mean, they, they're all very different. And what I like about the disc is that. You know, there's four very different genres. There's four very different games. Mm. Izzy, Izzy um, is a game that I, I really enjoyed when, I, when it came out. And we reviewed it in the mag in the first issue. Mm -hmm. I, thought, yep. I thought it was a really polished, really nicely put together platformer, um, and it was really it, enjoyable. It, it, is the, it is the established game, I think. You yeah. know, in our circles, it's the one that that people know, and you know, by Definitely. this demo, and people yeah. can have a little taste of it. Uh, yeah. I think that's I think that's something that's exciting because it's really um, smooth and it's really the, it's really the action's really good. So I think if you if you just look at the shots, and, oh, that's okay. When you actually play, you think, well, actually, this plays really nicely. It's very what kind of platformers do you think it it most reminds you of from from back in the day? Gosh, um, something I'm trying to think of platform because it's not a kind of beginning straight through to the end platform. It's probably something. Yeah, it's a non non-linear experience. Yeah. It's a bit like a Metroidvania kind yeah. of which the way, the way that I've the way that I've been explaining it um to people is it's kind of like a Metroidvania, but a bright and happy and sort of family friendly version of that. Yeah. It's very much not a horror game. I like but it's not, it. But it's not a kid's game either. It's a game that kids can play. Um but it's 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 definitely got challenge to it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, I'm it'll terrible at video games. It'll, it'll take you a good six to eight hours to complete it. Oh crikey! No, that's yeah, too much. So it's... <laughs> now, loads of our listeners and, and viewers love a challenge, but yeah, it looks it yeah. looks like a good one. Um, senile team, yes, are the ones bringing indie royalty, one. really, aren't they? Indie royalty. So, so I take it. I take it they were they were quite easy to get on board. They were like, yeah. Let's get that on Sega Powered. Yeah, senior, senior team are awesome. Um, uh, I would love to chat to those guys. Actually, oh, at yeah. some point, mm. so I might, uh, they I might, they uh, don't do much in the way of um, 
sort of publicity or Shout whatever you want to call no. it. Yeah, they don't, they don't, they don't do much. No. I think they're quite, I think they're camera shy. Maybe I don't know. I'll turn the cameras off if they want. I'll just get the <laughs> they can no. just be like black screen, and I'll just be like chatting here in the corner. So no, 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 no. it'll be it'll be all good. Just go ask them. I'm sure. I I'm will. Sure I will. Chance. I definitely will. Um, and then the final the final game on here, Flea by Lotte mm-hmm. Games. Uh, it's nice, isn't it? I love these kind of little sort of mm. you know single screen kind of puzzle platformer games you know it's is it kind yeah. of is it a genre is it a genre that that you guys like oh definitely me personally yeah it's you'll 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 swear more than any other game you'll ever play mm. and and mm-hmm. it will, you know pad rage will be will kind of they'll be they'll be sticking in the walls and but it, it's 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 got like one more go kind of thing to it because you get a lot of lives and you get stuck on the stage mm-hmm. and you can spend you can do 50 lives on this one stage just trying to get through it but you will keep going until yeah. you do and that's no exaggeration no not at all no 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 it's very like super meat boy it, it reminds me a little bit of rick dangerous i don't know if you guys oh, played yeah. that yeah. one back in the day one of my favorites it's, yeah had on the Amiga. yeah it's died so many times mm. that game i just but you just keep on mm. coming back you just just keep on coming back for more but flea i love it, it graphically it's simple I think yeah. you know it's the dream class is a powerful machine as you know yeah. uh it probably doesn't push it as as hard as it could go but for for what it does you know what, i think it what what it lacks in graphical fidelity it definitely make more than makes up for in in gameplay and repeat game gameplay as well um, Daffo. it's Daffo. proving to be a very very popular game with speed runners yes who are, who are trying to complete the game as quickly as they can with you know various rules set out like don't lose any lives for example is one is one of the um one of the challenges um and it is hard it's one of the hardest games i've played to be honest with you um but it's just unique and fun enough that uh, as dean said you know you just keep going keep going that right to it. the end it is this looks like a great little game and that that is your demo disc that is you know a jam-packed full yeah. game demo disc and it's yeah. new stuff with the dreamcast i think you know the dreamcast actually go go let's, let's let's talk about it let's talk about the dreamcast yeah um when it first came about actually we'll i'll, I'll chat to dean first about it so when, when it first came about i know you just done um saturn power what did you think about obviously like the you know the crossover between Saturn and Dreamcast and do you know did you actually get a Dreamcast when it was launched you know did you actually you know would it was it a console that kind of appealed to you did it did you think that it would be a success yeah I I had one very early on um I was freelance I was a freelance journalist then at Future at Future Publishing so I was doing a lot of writing for various mags so you any new system that came out you would get automatically because it meant you get work for it but the dream, the Dreamcast was one I wanted anyway. Um, I liked the games. I liked the games that were on it. I liked the launch lineup. I liked the Sega really put a lot of thought into into the games, and there were some stunning mm-hmm. arcade, you know, like Crazy Taxi and Soul Calibur. I mean, they're gorgeous. Mm-hmm. They um, are amazing. Yeah, even today, and the fact yeah. that the thing like still chucks out seven twenty p with, you know, little problem. It's just yeah, it is amazing, mm-hmm. isn't it? Yeah, um, I, I think obviously PlayStation Two coming along didn't help with a, had a DVD drive and it was, it was a little bit more powerful. Um, and by then Sony was kind of established. So I think that was, that didn't help, but, um, it's, it's reign was quite brief, but it was, it was, it was a good way. I mean, you know, there's nothing to kind of, I don't think Sega had anything to be ashamed of with it. I think they did, mm-hmm. they did a great machine. It was well thought out. They put a lot of care into it, yeah. the kind of control of the VMU online. You could play games online properly. I mean, that was, I wasn't, it wasn't done on the console. You couldn't do it. Not really. Um, so um, it was ahead it, of its time. Yeah, absolutely. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, it really was. It's why well, you know of all the all the consoles, Sega consoles. It's it's probably the one I go back to the most. Um, for things like Shenmue yeah. and um, Crazy Taxi and the, all the games I just mentioned, MSR. I mean, I, I've been I re-reviewed that last issue. I've been kind of playing oh, that on and off again over this month as well. So. So yeah, yeah, and and it's and it's our cover star. There it is. Look, the cover actually, star. There it is. That's actually my own Dreamcast. I took a photograph of it, and my partner, who's um, our graphic, our 
uh, illustrator and, and, and page designer sort of did this illustration based on it. It's really cool. Oh, it's that's it. amazing. Yeah, it looks fantastic. Yeah. Um, Oh, have you got the disc there? Do you want to give the little the disc yes. a little a little wave again? There you go. So, uh, oh, look at this! When you get it, it comes in a nice. It's, it's all wrapped up, so it doesn't move around in the bag when you when it's cellophane. Yeah. Amazing. It's all cellophane yeah. wrapped, and then you actually get the disc, and it's. Da, 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 da. There you go. Look at that. Um, and there's a bit of writing on the back, and all the kind of T's and C's you have to put on, and everything like that. Um, and the magazine's and available right now. So the magazine's I'll put available the link right in the description. Now. Yeah. Get it right now. Obviously, subscribers yeah. will already have it. People have pre-ordered it. Will already have it. Hopefully, by the time this goes out. But yes, yes. go, yes. go and get it. Um, yes. Yeah, so it. when when's this when's this going out? When when is this? Going to be? So um, everyone should be watching this uh, in and around the twenty something of July. <laughs> so oh yeah. Literally next. Literally yeah. a week from yeah. when we're recording this. So yes, yeah, so everyone. Yes, get involved right now. Don't delay. Get those because orders we... in. We we got a set amount of the, the, the CDs because they, they obviously you have to produce a certain amount. Um, so with a standard issue, if we run out, we, it's not that complicated to reprint it. With the mm. disc, it, it's kind of we've done this, uh, we've done a pretty substantial amount. But once they go, we we almost certainly probably won't do a reprint. When they're gone, they're gone. When they're yeah. gone, they're gone. Yeah. Mm. So we are encouraging people because we've had people come up to us and say, "Oh, can I get issue one?" And I said, "Well, no, we've we've run out at the moment." And it, yeah. I'd, I'd hate for somebody to come up into us in a couple of months and say, I really wanted to buy issue five and the disc and I, I didn't get it. And la, la, la. I just thought mm. it'd be around forever. And it, it almost certainly won't. So if you want it, I very much yeah. recommend that you get it quick. And is Sega it, Powered is a... Oh, sorry, Daniel, go on, carry on. I was just, just going to say, it is important to note that these are properly pressed discs. They're not CDRs. Mm. So hence why we can't just pop them out willy-nilly. You know, it has to be done in, uh, in you know, batches. They're a collectible, really, aren't they? Yeah. I and think, our guys yeah, they're, they're across they're, they're across between a collector's item and an actual you know product that you can enjoy um mm -hmm. there's there's four games of which you know you can um they're, they're all limited to some degree but there's a lot of replayability in them for sure mm -hmm. um yeah I, I i hope people in in 20 years are saying oh I remember when that happened and that was awesome and well someone in 20 years could come up with a sealed one They'll be like, I'm not opening this. Look, here you go. Sega Powered. That would you be know. very interesting to see. It's the Still last ever there. Dreamcast. The last ever Dreamcast demo CDs right there. <laughs> ah, look, well, hopefully my, my hopefully not the last. The last. Yeah. No. Yeah, it's hopefully called, there's more. It's called number one for a reason. So. <laughs> oh, there you yeah, go, yeah. guys. There you go. A little taster for the future. Um, Sega Powered. Oh, let's have a, I just want to have a quick word about Sega Powered. And um, I subscribed you know from from the kickstarter and it is a fantastic read it's got i think a lot of the um our listeners viewers in the uk would have bought sega power back in the day and obviously dean used to be um you know one of the editors at that mag and that essence that kind of essence of 90s journalism with sort of you know it's just been like refined and you've got a great team and it's just a great read you know when whenever i get it you know if i'm um, out and about i'll just you know, ooh, you know finish that you know, go, going back to the Dreamcast, you know, the the feature you did on Shenmue, fantastic, mm -hmm. obviously fantastic series of games. And, you know, I just really like the way you covered that. And, you know, it's a great, you know, it's a great read. Um, that team, what what have they been like to work with so far? I mean, it's been more than, like you say, it's been about nine, nine, ten months now you guys have been working together. What's, yeah. you know, how, and actually, how are they in comparison to your team at, at yeah, Sega Power? They're, they're, all, they're all horrible people. I hate them. <laughs> <laughs> bastards a lot of them absolute <laughs> bastards no it, no it was it was it was really good actually because when you when you do these sorts of things and you think because it was literally a case of um i talked to i talked to paul briefly and we sort of we've been sort of knocking ideas around for a while and i i just thought do you know what let's let's just do it he was working on um pick um, Arc uh, amiga addict and i thought let's do it let's do a mag let's do it maybe just seg mag and it just so happened that naturally that the, the four of us got together and we had Paul, who's obviously hugely experienced in the retro. That's Paul Monaghan, obviously Paul Monaghan, leader sorry, of yeah. um, uh, Maximum Power Up podcast. Yeah. And a lot of our listeners would have would have checked him out. Yeah. Um, so we had him on board. We had Mark Jowett on board, who is half of Sega Mags, who mm -hmm. is, has an incredible knowledge of the whole Sega history and the magazines themselves. His whole house is just magazines, isn't it? Yeah, so he's, literally. Like, he's, <laughs> he's, got, he's got thousands of them. He's got a ridiculous amount. 
Um, and then there was Neil, who is a um, who I've obviously used to work with at Future a little bit. Mm. He's a great writer. He he knows. He's got an encyclopedic knowledge of so many different genres and RPGs and smuts. He is he's what he doesn't know about smuts isn't really isn't worth knowing. And I just thought we've got four great people here together, all very different, all very um, different personalities. We're not all going to agree on the same thing. We're not, you know, so it's kind of we all bounce off each other. So we tend to arrive at a point where we've all kind of got our own. Do you have to pull here. rank much? You're like, no, hang on, hang on. No, this is what we're doing. <laughs> has it been that? Has it, has it gotten um, that bad? No, I mean we disagree on stuff, and we, occasionally, and we don't always agree and stuff things like that. But um, what we take, we everything we got a group chat, so we, everything gets discussed. So we, from the reviews to the features to the cover, we all say right, what are we can do on the cover. We come up with some ideas, and we put them together, and eventually we kind of work out one that we all kind of agree on. So it's all very diplomatic. It's all it's no kind of yeah. Um, I just I just think it, it, if it if it, was, if it was just my magazine, it wouldn't be as good. It wouldn't be anywhere near as good no. because you need that other input. <clears throat> so to kind of soften the edges a bit or whatever and just make it more of a random yeah. thing a bit of disagreement is a good thing for sure mm. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> absolutely, as long, as it's, absolutely. As, as long as it's civil yeah um, <laughs> in some ways it's very similar to the old mags it's kind of the, the sort of team mm. is very similar the only difference is obviously we're all remote so none of us and i'm the only full-time person so i'm the only one who's working on it this is my job i do this as you know I do this 24 7 literally 24 7. <laughs> um, so um the other guys have got other things they do and you know paul is much at hmb and he's got he edits pixel addicts as well and works on other things and he's mods. got a lot on his plate that guy yes he's a fair. busy boy he's a very i need to boy. pick his brain one day yeah mm. um but it's a great team, you know. You guys, you got a good chemistry. Yeah. Uh, even your guest writers, obviously, people that you know have, have done stuff for us. People like like Retro Faith, and you know, it's the, the passion comes yeah. through in the writing. I think this is something that it's same with Sega Mania. You know, they, they they deserve a bit of a shout, and it's you know, it's that kind of passion for the games and passion for the topic. Yeah. But that I think really comes through in 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 all of this. Um, and yeah. freebies and freebies on the front covers you know that's yeah. quite a nice thing yeah, yeah passion is passion is, is 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 it really i mean you've got to have a love for what you do because if you do get a lot you're doing it a lot of hours into something if you don't enjoy it you're not really into it then it, it, it's never gonna it's never it's gonna show through and people aren't gonna be interested but as long as you kind of put your own passion into it then um then people get pick, people pick up on that definitely absolutely so um daniel then um do you used to buy a lot of these mags i'd actually let's 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 rewind a little bit um what was your first console what was your sort of first foray into gaming obviously i've spoken to dean about this in the past but what's your sort of your background gaming -wise? my my first console if you're talking about actual games consoles it would it would be the master system ah very good yeah um, same. But i did have a bbc micro before that and, oh, crikey. and an acorn electron which i didn't really oh, wow. at the time is kind of the same thing yeah i thought it was some massive upgrade but apparently it's just a smaller version of the same thing essentially we had those at primary school both of those i think actually yeah no yeah same yeah, and that's what that's why i got one because i thought you know that's awesome um and they were cheap to pick up at the time as well oh wow i don't, I don't, I don't, remember, I don't exactly remember how much they were but i remember it was it, you know would have been cheap for my parents to, to spring for it for sure nice so master system do you ever used to buy sega mags back in the day did you ever read some of dean's work back in the day you know i almost definitely did i obviously didn't know who he was um because i would have essentially been a kid back then so i just i read read the reviews and the the banter um ne never used to pay attention to the name unfortunately <laughs> but <laughs> um sega power was definitely one of the big ones because i was such a sega sega fanboy um with we we always used to when when we would go on like a family trip somewhere um we would just buy like all of the magazines so whatever was available that was talking about you know whatever cool sonic game was currently yeah. currently out that week it was like yeah let's just buy all of them and, yeah uh, read them all It'd be, I remember when Sonic 2 came out, I think I bought every every mag that covered it. So yeah, Sega Power yeah. and 
um sega pro and just everything <laughs> just me machine sega i like a lot uh yeah. they they were great you know obviously i was you know said this before on on my podcast with dean but i, I love those magazines they were they were the main thing i went to you know everything if i needed yeah. no i don't read a book sega magazine that's how done and that that's that's why that's how arcade yeah. attack started really um i, I think I, that was so important back then because fewer people were into gaming so if in order for you to like have a a conversation you essentially were having a, a one-way conversation with the magazines mm. um yeah. obviously they all allowed you to write in but i never never did because i was terrified that they'd make <laughs> me <fun> too <laughs> <laughs> as they often did we did we did yeah the most embarrassing thing is when you get readers who contact you and go yeah, I used to read the magazine 30 years ago, and then you wrote this about me. They send you photographs of, of what you wrote about them. <laughs> you yeah. put my photo in, and you said I was a dick or something. And it's like, oh. yeah. <laughs> and then you're like, okay, I might as well apologize now, even yeah, though it's it 30 years later. Yeah. <laughs> it is. I just love that banner. I love. I love the whole. Yeah. This whole kind of movement, I think, is yeah. is great thing. And you know, things like I think Amiga Addict are in Double H Smith now, yeah, and yeah, you yeah. know, it's crazy to think. Like, it's yeah, crazy there's that demand for it now. I was all about the magazines. I even had my own at one point. Oh, yeah. Tell us yeah. more. Uh, when I was about 12, I made a magazine called Tens Magazine. And basically, oh, yeah. it was, we would only put stuff in there that was a 10. Okay, nice. Which kind of Nothing changed. like the machine used during labor. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> <laughs> Mike got no, confused no, no. with it if it was on the shelf. Like, Definitely oh, not. Yeah, tens, mate. So they yeah. weren't. They were. They, it was. I think we had about four issues, and it was um, hand typed on a typewriter. Amazing. Even though that was like woefully outdated by that point, but that's what I had. The cover was just hand drawn and photocopied by wow. uh, by my mum at work. Nice. <laughs> so she'd literally just go into work and make these photocopies and. Um, yeah, I, I think um, four issue run. Oh, yeah, Daniel. crazy. You know, I'll, have to, I'll have to dig them out. I was going to say, please tell me you've got some of those still. Oh, I definitely, still, I definitely still do. I, I, I find them occasionally every few years when I'm having a look and doing a clear out, and I find them. And um, my what, dad remember... used to have um, one of those old electronic typewriters. Actually, it was oh, quite yeah. ahead of its time. <laughs> it had, you know, yeah. you had to plug it in, and it went. Zoo, 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 zoo. Oh, it was amazing. But yeah, and then when it um, yeah. you had to like erase, I was oh, I can't you know that <laughs> the tact ah oh, the tactileness of it. Oh, I just loved it. Yeah, this just, thing was yeah. full on mechanical, like it was an anti full on. You didn't even have to yeah, plug yeah. it in. No, no, no. Yeah, you used to have to buy um, like these reels of of ink. Was it like the what? ones in Resident Evil? Very much like that. Yeah, yeah. Sounds and you, have, you used to have to press pretty hard as well smashing it just imagine yeah. you're like smashing this review there you go so yeah. tens all right some of these tens you remember some of the games that you featured uh yes definitely definitely some of the sonic games yes. um so i think we started around about the time that sonic 3 came out okay so it was i mean and it was probably about six months old at that point too um would you say sonic 3 was a 10 Ooh. at the time i thought it was yeah oh oh yeah. my there you go. Um, we'll leave that chat for another day, I think. Uh, Pokemon Stadium, weirdly enough, was was a ten as well. Oh yes, yes, okay. But I feel like I almost wrote it before I played it. If you know what I mean. All right. Oh, like, you were going on with just just general consensus. You're like, okay, like, yeah. It's like this is a Pokemon like game, and Pokemon is awesome, uh, so therefore it's a ten. Yeah. <laughs> okay. That's, that's, that's <laughs> kind of how that. it works. <laughs> um, Pokemon. Yeah, no, I, I I really enjoyed it at the time. So it is. So how did you actually? How did Wave Games come about then? So when obviously you you look at you know you you find these indie developers, but you know how how was it founded? Like how how long have you guys been going? Like you know is it you know how are you the, finding it? Well, the short version is it evolved over time. Um, it was it's me and my brother Nick, and obviously we grew up together, lived together, so we have a shared gaming history um and we've done all these weird things over the years just the kind of things that brothers do you know make make magazines and um do little review videos that no one ever sees um we started to um we, we started to like make mods of games 
So, yes, for, right. for example, um, CNR team, who are responsible for Intrepid Izzy, back in 2003, they had an engine called Beats of Rage. Okay, which, all right, I see what you're saying. Which is kind of like a Streets of Rage-esque engine where you could make your own games. Lovely. So we used to do all that sort of thing and um, sort of struck up a relationship with them since then. Mm -hmm. um, and um, it's it's hard to really put like a finite start date on when Wave really began because it's slowly evolved from that, just being fans of indie gaming mm -hmm. and fans of the Dreamcast and the other consoles which we like, um, to starting to distribute games for people and helping with manufacturing because that's an area which I have experience in in my work and, and life, um, as well as the marketing side of things. Um, but then last year, when Intrepid Izzy was about to come out, um, it became evident that because of this Brexit thing, which people might have heard of, <laughs> it was going to be quite difficult to distribute it because CNR team are based in the Netherlands. Yeah. And almost everybody else who bought it was not in the Netherlands. Yep. And a large number of them were in the UK. Yeah. So it was like, I basically emailed uh, Rule, the mm -hmm. main head honcho dude. Mm -hmm. And I said, hey, man, uh, this is going to be a problem. Uh, maybe I can help. And he's like, yes, please do. <laughs> this <laughs> is what we have to work with now, isn't it? Yeah, like, pretty you know, much. But, so, but there are these opportunities. That that That's a Brexit opportunity there. You've yeah. picked up on there, Daniel. I mean, you know, we just, it, it took a while to work out the details and how it was going to work, but it, it worked out, didn't it? I mean, evidently, lots of people have got the game now yeah. um, that maybe mm -hmm. wouldn't have otherwise been able yep. to justify it. Yeah. Um, yeah. I think there was a European distributor that were charging like something ludicrous, like thirty pounds for delivery. Oh yeah, yeah. And I just thought this doesn't need to be any more than like two pound. Crikey, I remember those days sending stuff to Portugal for two pounds. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. Different, different era completely. Days are gone now. Days are gone. Days are gone. Well, to send to send stuff to Germany, for example, from here. Um, if you want it to actually get there, you're looking at sort of nine pounds for a game. I mean, it would be nice for it to get there. <laughs> yeah, well, that's one of the biggest <laughs> issues now. There's a lot, a lot of stuff that just doesn't turn up, so you have oh. to. Uh, the 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 days of sending anything and it's been a real crimper. You know, yeah. it is it is the real elephant in the room. I think with regards to it's, distribution it's, and everything. Yeah, it's yeah. probably more delays than not getting there. I think I'm probably exaggerating mm. there, but. Mm -hmm. It used to be like you'd send something and it would be there in a week or two. Yeah. Um, and now I'm I'm having some things, particularly to Germany. Really, it's everywhere else is mostly okay. Mm. Um, three four weeks later, they're they're asking where it is, and then there's a bit. You know, the big retro gaming community in in Germany, and a lot of there is based in Germany, and it's you know. It's one of the places you want to get stuff to. Yeah, it's um, it's pretty painful, but we've we've kind of cracked that formula now. We've worked out how to make sure it gets there. Nice, uh, nice. And this is it. This is what we're having to it. <laughs> so what? So what? What is your, your kind of background then? What what kind of assists with with Wave? Are you sort of a big marketer? Is you know obviously you're a yeah you're a video so, game aficionado. So I've I've been a gaming fan for for life, but. Um, in my career, I've always worked in marketing, um, partic particularly sort of digital marketing. So, mm -hmm. uh, without getting too too difficult, if you if you if if you want to learn about something online, the companies that I've worked with and and been involved with are more than likely uh, how you learn about this stuff. Mm -hmm. Whether it be paid ads, social media stuff, SEO, all the all the rest of it. That's um, it. And that really helps with 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 uh, getting a game out there. Mm -hmm. It really um, does. I think social media, if, for us, I mean, uh, with that social media, I, think, mm -hmm. I don't think Arcade Attack would be a thing. But yeah, it's such a great way of getting stuff yeah. to people. It's kind of the way it's done now. Mm -hmm. But I find every, there's, there's people who will pay attention and get their information from different sources, right? So you have some people who will literally only do Twitter. So you have to make yeah. sure you get the message to them on Twitter. Mm -hmm. You have people 
still, if you can believe it now, who don't do any of that, but they still buy magazines. So magazines mm -hmm. is very yep. much still very important for them as well as, as well as people like us who just still love that stuff. Mm -hmm. Um, and then you have people that find out about new games from going to retail shops if you can believe it in in your mind you're thinking oh that's from the past and no one does that anymore but no people a lot still of people do, it. do yeah, yeah. and they that's awesome, get down, you know they still want to get down cex and have a little look or get down game and have a little look and yeah, so, yeah you got to get into all of these pies Pre really. preferably your your local friendly uh independent but of so, course yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> less less of them about but there's still plenty plenty if you they really are it. They really are. I can I can name drop a few. You know, people like Saw Thumb Games in uh, yeah. um, mm. in York and Play Nation Games down here in Croydon, and you know, there's loads, yeah. loads. Just Play keep Nation strong. have been pretty awesome, by the way. They're good lads. The, the, would... the first time we went in there with the with with Intrepid Izzy, Dan, the guy that runs the place. Yeah, Dan. He, yeah. He's like, yeah, this is awesome. I'm definitely stocking this. Yeah, and he's he's, he's been a really good proponent for uh, for the indie stuff. He is. He said to me years ago that we should do like like a live arcade attack thing down there, and then mm. COVID hit, so that kind of yes. that kind of uh, derailed all of that business. But yeah, you never know. You if you haven't them. if you haven't been there for a little while, they've really like massively like ramped things up in in recent. Mm, there's months. a cafe and everything down there. So yeah, 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 yeah. underground. This isn't just an advert for Play Nation. No, 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 no. <laughs> But yeah, um, if you are, other indies are available. Other indie shops are available, and you know we try and mention as many of them as yeah. we can. But and there's there a massive quite. list of them on our website too. There you go. There yeah. you can go to Waves. You can go to Waves website and, <laughs> and check those out. But you know, I mean, again, that's another scene that I'm really glad is going. You know, all of these indie shops are still mm. are still yeah. you know selling that's a, stuff. That's but... a podcast in itself, right? I mean, you could talk for two it hours really about is. these. Yeah. It really is. I'd like to get the Play Nation Games um, guys on here uh, again with a Heart mm. Game because they are come to Croydon, everyone. Seriously, come to Croydon. You can go to yeah. Play Nation Games. You can go to Heart of Gaming upstairs. You know, you can play some yeah, arcade right games until you drop. It's yeah, it literally is. You know, it's the place to be. You know, yeah. People are like oh Croydon, no, 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 no. Yes, come, come, yeah. come see us. You, you might even see us. Yeah, you might even see me and the Arcade Attack guys down there. I well, got so. nothing bad to say about Croydon. Dav, you really, really, Daniel. Where are you from, anyway? Where, where, whereabouts in the UK? Um, from? For the last seven years, I've been in Norwich, which is in Norfolk. Okay. Not somewhere you really think about when you think about gaming, but uh, not really. It, it's it's got a pretty big retro scene, so that's that's pretty helpful. Nice. Um, I was originally from a town called Saint Albans, which you might have heard of. North of London. Uh, yep, yeah, just north of London. It's right. on the Thames Link line, so anytime you go anywhere between Bedford and Brighton, you're going past St Albans. There you go. Um, so it's like, you're like the other side of London from us, really, aren't you? Yeah, it, basically, so. basically. But yeah, I was, I was there for the first sort of 25 years of my life and um, just got a bit bored of it. Um, Fancy hanging out with some people from Norfolk. Why not? Yeah, why not? Exactly. There was, I think, actually, there was someone from Norfolk was opening a, an arcade there. There is no an arcade in Nor Norwich City. So, there is, yeah. Uh... yeah. It's called Retro Replay. Thank you, Retro Replay. There you go. They've got a name drop as well. So yeah, Retro yeah. Replay. And yeah, we do. If we're ever that way, we have vowed to mm. go and see them. But it's yeah, it's, it's it's from that sort of new breed of arcade where you sort of pay seven pound or whatever, and you can just play all day. Mm. I mean, I arcade mean... games were fantastic dean I, I, let's, let's bring you back into the conversation a little bit um sega arcade games yes back in the day quite a few thoughts, <laughs> thoughts. <laughs> favorite ones actually i mean I'm, you know you, you're gonna be in I've, i don't know I've, i keep saying this about dean but i'm so jealous obviously because you're there when all yeah. of this stuff was new when it was all coming and you were you know an, an adult so you can actually afford to do things mm. um did you spend much time down the arcades was it something that obviously you did in your in your spare time, even for the mag. Uh, yeah, I mean, when I was when I was a kid, I was sort of brought up uh, near the near the coast, so near seaside places. So I spent a lot of my childhood in arcades, really. Mm. Um, and obviously, when we started the mag, we had very very close links with Sega. So we were, you know, Sega World. We went to that. And we spent a lot of time up there, and you know, when used to be Sega arcades. World in Croydon. I don't know if you want to come to that one. No, yeah, we, 
We went to the one right in the um, I can't remember, it's right in the middle, of, it was right in the centre of London, the big wow. one. Wow. Um, and it was just, you know, memorable ones for me were probably, I remember, I remember being oh, sort of jaw droppingly excited with virtual racing. I loved that. Yeah. Um, virtual fighter. Um, virtual, virtual copy, all this kind of virtual stuff. I just remember just, they, they, they just went for a period when they just, they got it all right. You know, yeah. Space, yeah. Uh, Space Harrier. Um, Virtual Striker too. Virtual yeah, Striker. Virtual Striker. Yeah. Um, that's, that's Daytona. One that Daytona, guys. Mm. Come on. This is something you can play. Sega like Rally. Well. Sega, Sega Rally. Rally. Oh. Best game of all time. Best game of all. Ooh, that's the, a big. That's the, a big o the only true 10 game. out of 10 in my mind. Oh, it is great, though. I wish it had yeah. more tracks, but yeah, it's fantastic. I'm, I'm addicted to it, seriously. Like it is, and then yeah. me, Dean, and I spoke about the new Sega Rally that's coming out. Obviously, um, your friend is remastering everything. I've forgotten his name. So, oh, um, over, uh, the, um, um, Alessandro. Alessandro, thank yeah, you. An Italian over living jump. in LA. Yeah, over, over jump. jump amazing yeah. like what he's doing with that again let's let's plug that again i think that's definitely worth a plug yeah. for the sega rally yeah. fans it is just bringing it all into hd and all that. it's an agonizing way to be able to play it it is a bit <laughs> but i i actually really respect the fact that he hasn't just put out like unfinished demos if you know what i mean mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. i love demos yeah. but not not when there's sort of you know 10 percent finished and yeah I, you, you, you just see like to, yeah, it's like space is where three should be. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, well, Sega Rally is all about the handling, isn't it? You've got to get that handling right, otherwise it just doesn't work. And you just, it's got to be spot on, and that must, that must take months of tweaking to get well, it spot on. Sega have never been able to recreate it, in my opinion. From yeah. the arcade from, cabinet, or yeah, from the Saturn version. I mean, they they obviously handle quite differently, but they handled correctly. If you know what I mean, for their different inputs. So I love the, the little Saturn... tapping on this. Yeah, I love the tapping on the Saturn pad. It's yeah, like the Saturn version. The, the, the Saturn version was the one, the one that I played the most of, obviously, because it was the home version, and it was also a really cheap game, from what I remember. Like it might have been. Like yeah, it I'll came. Like it came, it came out, and obviously, when it was new, it wasn't necessarily cheap, but it it quickly became cheap. Um, probably due to the fact that the Saturn also didn't really have much of a lifespan unfortunately yeah. Yeah. the best things never do sound games were really cheap for a lot of years weren't they you could pick up mm. for pennies almost and, and obviously now it's a bit different now but yeah we, well, they we fall apart have... now don't they because obviously in the uk yeah. we got the the cardboard board thing yeah yeah there used to be um i uh, um I would say a retro game shop but it wasn't a retro game shop then it was just like a game shop um that sold used games um and i remember they had sega saturn games for like 50p wow. and we're talking we're talking sort of 97 so like not long after the system came out um wow. and some some of the games that are starting to be like really expensive i distinctly remember buying for next to nothing um to the point where they were just giving them away almost like I, oh i've bought five games can you... <laughs> and they're like yeah have another couple for free you know? <laughs> this is it these are the kind of stories now that like making people stock up if they see xbox 360 yeah. games for like, mm. like 50p a pound they're like well those guys uh, had yeah, an atari jaguar for 12 pounds that is ridiculous right and i turned it so, down because there's no games for it they're easily over 200 quid now I think for, yeah, for a Jag easily. console working, the CD is something ridiculous. You get a Jag CD, you're pretty much a millionaire. <laughs> yeah. Do you think it'll go down again though? Do you think the prices will come down? Never. Do you know? I, I know. think that's it. I think that's it now. Especially with, now. especially with CD based consoles because they just fail. So the number of them in existence is reducing over time, <laughs> right? Yeah. It's, and the number of the people who can maintain them as well is reducing so mm. yeah it's the same thing with classic cars you know as as they get written off and traded in because apparently that still happens sometimes and rust gets to them and you know yeah. the the value just keeps going up 
and then you got the grading. We got this whole grading scenario now. I mean, it's awesome if you've got loads of this stuff and it's like your retirement. But um, <laughs> if if you're like most mortals, you, you don't have this stuff and you yeah. can't justify holding these games anymore. I've got yeah. games now that I'm scared to touch because <laughs> I know how expensive they are, and it's like, oh, you know, keep that in the safe. When do you cash them in, though, Daniel? This is the thing, like, you know, do you, do you cash them in when, when you, you're mm. when you're uh, well, unfortunately for most people, it's when something happens and you need to, right? That's yeah. the reality of it. Yeah. Um, I've just stopped collecting now. I think everything's gone so ridiculous. I might pick up a Mega Drive game here and there, but yeah, it's just being priced out of it. It's really been priced out of it. I mean, it's... Truthfully, yeah. I mean, I've still got some of the stuff I had from back then, mm -hmm. um, but a lot of it... Any Master overtime. System games? There's got to be some Master System games in there. Uh, not many, to be honest. Um, I've got some of my original Master System games. The I've Ninja got... is one of them. The Ninja, yeah. Go up. Um, Sonic 2. Sonic 2, yeah. Yeah, the one with the minecart and stuff. Yeah, amazing game. Um, I've still got my Sonic 1. Streets of Rage, the... actually. Yeah. Ooh. Fun, okay, fact that's a bit about of... Fun fact about Streets of Rage. I didn't even know that there was a Mega Drive version of Streets of Rage what? when I was a kid. So it was had, just that version you knew? I had the Master System version, and when I later on saw one of these compilations, like, best Mega Drive games, mm -hmm. um, you know the ones that have got, like, four games? The Mega the Games. Yeah, yeah, the, the Mega, Mega Games. games. Yeah. I was like, oh, I didn't know there was a Mega Drive version. <laughs> and it's, like, technically better, but I just didn't like it because it didn't feel the same. <laughs> No, of course, of course, yeah. you wouldn't. Yeah. So to this day, it just doesn't feel right. So I was weird. the other way around. Yeah, but it mm. is one of these games that, because of those Streets of Rage was um, one of the early uh, uh, Mega Drive games. The Master System version is not leagues away from it. Really, it feels no. They did a really good satisfying. job. They, they did, did a really yeah. good job. They did a really good job, but I'm not sure a lot of people bought it. So yeah, that might be worth mm. if you could in the you know in the future. You don't want to you want to leave that wherever yeah. it is. I don't want to say we were poor because we weren't, but we weren't we weren't like wealthy enough to buy these things when they came out brand new. Games so are so much cheaper now. Games are like yeah. you know just way cheaper I, now than. I don't think people <laughs> realize that that the prices in real terms have actually gone down. Mm -hmm. Because I'm sure yeah. you remember n64 games were like 55 pounds sometimes mm -hmm. and that was 20 years ago 25 years yeah. ago i remember like, street fighter 2 being about 60 70 pounds yes i was going to yeah, say that yeah. is, street mm. fighter 2 is expensive so, yeah. in today's yeah. money well it's over 100 quid that's just you know it's just crazy yeah. money like you wouldn't you wouldn't so, say yeah, that realistically they've gone down right so mm -hmm. if if anything um better value now it's better value now it definitely is you and could argue know, that the games were better back then, maybe, but that's just personal preference. I think games are great. I think I've I've mm. been a I've been a bit of a convert lately to to, mm. to, mo to modern gaming. So when when I first started Arcade Attack, I mm. really wasn't much of a modern gamer. It just that kind of I had to keep on. I wanted to keep on going yeah. back to the retro stuff because I just found it fun. I thought like you know modern mm. stuff was hard to get into, but now I think. Mm. It's really good. I think modern gaming is 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 at a really good place. Um, I do play a lot of modern stuff, but it tends to be modern stuff that's like the older stuff. Mm -hmm. yeah. So yeah. any anything that Nintendo puts out pretty much is gold. In my oh mind. yeah, yeah. They they've replaced Sega essentially because they've they've kind of stuck to their roots um, a little bit. Um, they've got all the party games, really. Yeah. You know, they've got the they've, they've got the best party stuff. On and there's there. a lot of a lot of indie stuff now as well that mm -hmm. previously wouldn't have seen the light of day. Um, yeah. And those developers are going for the Switch, you know, as the, the yeah. they saw their first protocol. Yeah, exactly. So that's that's why the Switch is kind of my console of choice, really. Mm. Um, I would like to see like a new Game Boy, something small. Yeah. And handheld because a switch is it is portable technically, but yeah, it kind of hurts. Really. You're like hold standing up and using it. Well, it's <laughs> not something that you want to be like on the train with, really. Nah, I, I know I know people do, but I want something that will fit in the pocket in my pocket 
and I can just whip it out and play for. Well, I mean, I guess that's this, right? Yeah, yeah. Oh, mobile gaming. Well, that's different. That's a different conversation. Yeah, it's not. Right? I think it's not. It's not the same. It's. I, it's not the same. It's I had. I had a switch. I had a switch until today, when All right. I. <laughs> When I kind of thought I had the opportunity to buy a, a PS5, funny enough, oh, I, was, yeah. I, was talk, I was on the phone to Daniel and I went, "I've just found one to be. I just found a PS5." Yeah. So it was like I'm gonna have to. So I bought it, but it was kind of like, well, I, I have this amount of money, but if I sell this, this, and this, I can have that amount of money to pay it. So it was a case of I sold my PS4 and I sold my Switch in order to buy a PS5, and I thought I've got to yeah. do it. Wow, well, that's, that's how it always used to be. To you. We'll have to come back to you, Dean, just to see if it was worth it. Because oh, yeah. our Keith has got mm. our Keith has got one, and um, I don't know. I'm not convinced yet. I'm not convinced by but play by Demon's the Souls, and, and then you'll be. It's, it's astonishing. Yeah. Okay. Absolutely astonishing. It's, it's, it's just, I've it's still got beautiful. an old telly. I haven't got like one of those fancy down like 4K tellies mm. yet. Even it's actually if there's something better than the 4K now. I don't know. Um, oh, probably. But I'm, 16k, yeah. 30, 48k. I'm still, I'm, just, <laughs> I'm still rocking a HD ready 720p. So yeah, yeah. yeah I had a 4k mind. and it went wrong. Oh, see, this is what happens. This is yeah, what happens. They don't. You know, they more... just. They don't. Um. They don't have the longevity that they used to have. CRTs are still going. If you go to the heart of gaming in Croydon, you'll still see like CRTs from from the nineties, like still. Yeah, and they're expensive the now too. I know you, you go into marketplace and it says ideal for retro gaming, hundred pounds. <laughs> Whereas before they were checking on skips. It's like, oh come on. Yeah, it's, it's uh, it was only about ten years ago. You get them down British Heart Foundation, yeah, for like a ten, like for ten pound or twenty quid or something. Yeah. Like people just didn't want them, and it's like nowadays yeah. it's like, hmm. It's gold because there's people like us who are like, oh yeah, <laughs> mm. yeah, go on then. Yeah, we'll just a, we'll use the AV and we'll try and like tune the channel and yeah oh all of that stuff. we we have to have a bunch for testing because obviously there's a bunch of retro gamers that only play on CRTs right and some are playing on the high end Sony PVM whatever high you know really high end stuff and some are yeah. playing on your 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 Beko Beko Sharp Iwa you no know, cheap oh, TVs god. yeah oh god. And, it's like a completely different um type of screen entirely yeah. um and something that looks completely legible and readable text for example on on one of the sony's uh completely unreadable on one of the other ones on on the other system so oh, yeah that cool. testing is really important and then it goes the other way you, you have people playing on you know dreamcast games on 4k 70 inch tvs where you can you know see individual pixels mm. Um, so it's important to make sure it looks good there too. It's yeah, that's true. The Dreamcast again, amazing console. Mm. I'm so glad, you know. I'm so glad you guys have done this. Um, I'm looking forward to getting mine. I'll have to put my mm. GD ROM back in my Dreamcast. We'll get another <laughs> so Dreamcast. Okay, another. Stop it! Stop it! Yeah. I haven't got any money, Daniel. There's lots. I've got lots any money. Of, there's lots of different colours. You've got to have them all, mate. Oh no! People are doing like nice shells and stuff as well. No, mm. it's like oh god. Yeah, I've we got a this, purple um, one. We did this thing, and, and I kind of put a thing out to the community saying that send us your photos for the Dreamcast. And we did this kind of montage, and on the ins we tend to do this thing every issue on the inside, front, inside, back. It's kind of you know a, a linking thing, and um, so we put some of the photos in there. So when you get the issue, lovely, you'll see that, and it's just it's some really cool stuff. Um, just sort of anything for VMSs to kind of the controllers, yeah. the games. Um, it's just a real, and, and people just collect them, and it's, some of them have got like. Is that 10, on the inside 15. cover? Yeah, inside in, and the inside back yeah. as well. So they're kind of on both. Oh, papers. nice! That's a cool place for it. Um, yeah. So uh, so that, that, that's really cool. It's, and people, some people have modded them. Some people have just kind of kept them as they should be. And yeah. obviously, there were so many different colours. There were so many variant, variant variations mm. of different. Yeah. Colors. We've got so twelve beautiful. Dreamcasts. Wow. Because oh, lend us one. Yeah, <laughs> just give, give him one. Give Dylan one. We every, <laughs> give everything with a DD wrong. <laughs> everything we put out, we have to test it in all the different models to make all sure right. it boots. Okay. Like, as as crazy as that sounds, sometimes there'll be one model like like the first dream, the first Japanese model made by Sanyo or something, mm -hmm. and it it certain certain games just won't boot at all. Yeah, just like gotta make sure it boots on everything. 
Yeah. Oh, wow. Well, that's work you don't mind, isn't it? I wouldn't mind that, yeah. that bit of work, you know. Because the thing that's... is, you can't put a disclaimer on the back saying, we'll not work on this particular look at C- look for serial number da, 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 won't work on <laughs> yeah no no no, no it's not it. people won't won't be won't be doing that i love it i love it but you know the demo disc i think you know is a great thing viewers listeners go check it out link is in the description um yeah, i asked this question do. to dean i asked this question to dean in his interview but daniel mm-hmm. this is this is the, the question that we end all of our interviews on this is um our Adrian's fault. I have to ask it. Uh, so you've not been prepped, not been prepped at all. No, not at all. I have no idea. Um, no, I, didn't, I didn't warn him. It's <laughs> um, if you could go out for drinks with any video game character, so Sonic, Mario, anyone like that, who would you choose and why? Ah, character. I was expecting mm. you to say developer or something. And I was, you can I say was like, legendary. You can, if you, there's a yeah. legendary developer you like or someone, yeah, you could say Char- that. Yeah, video not. game character would be a really interesting one. We've um, had some interesting answers. I mean, the typical one when we used to just do text interviews, the the, the yeah. favorite was was Lara Croft. I was about to say, yeah, I was going to say, yeah, that's like the obvious <laughs> answer. <laughs> I can't remember what I said. It wasn't. It wasn't particularly good though. I don't think it was. It wasn't particularly clever. You're not going to give Dan- Daniel any hints here. No, it's, yeah, it's, I, it's I literally gonna... can't remember. I can see it whirring. It's whirring. It's, it's going to come up mm. with something amazing. It's I wish happen. I had longer to come up with an answer. Yeah, sorry, mate. No, I really have sprung this on you. This is what we do. This is Arcade Attack in a nutshell right now. I mean, if if I had a sit down with Lara Croft, I'd say, are you doing this because you want to or because you're programmed <laughs> to do it? <laughs> that's kind, of, that's kind of the way my mind works. Okay, right. So that's one question that needs to be answered. <laughs> All right. Okay. Are you going yeah. with Lara Croft? We're going to stick on Lara Croft. Nah, that's too basic. I can't. I can't stick with Lara Croft. <laughs> um. Oh, he's thinking. He is. Knuckles. Yeah. Knuckles. Interesting. Mm. There's so many questions. So I much, love. Yeah, I love. So much Knuckles. backstory that we don't know. They tried to flesh some of it out in Sonic 2 with Idris Elba. I thought I thought that, that was really I really enjoyed that movie. I, I, really I don't know if I consider that to be canon though. So it's, it's almost no! like an alternate universe. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I don't think it's canon. No, but so Idris Elba was a good choice though, to be honest, to play that character. It um, was. The bit where he goes dot 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 dot. I couldn't I couldn't stop laughing in the cinema. I was like laughing yeah. louder than everyone. So, Before I forget, yeah. quickly, um, we need to thank Ian Michael. We do. And Ian. Adam Burrell. The, the, those are the guys that put the whole system together, the menu system, the, 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 the ability to sort of, when you load up the game, you get a nice menu system that you can choose what you want. There's music playing, there's animation. And they, those are the guys that put all that together. And they did a really great job. Absolutely yeah. amazing. So, um, yeah, I want to, just before I forget, because obviously they might watch this and... <laughs> you'll think that ungrateful git he didn't even like yeah. mention us once like no, no. Th- those guys those deserve guys. all the credit and more you know mm-hmm. they really um they've kind of they dedicate their life to this stuff so mm-hmm. um definitely go and check them out follow them on social media and tell them that yeah. you're s- incredibly grateful for <laughs> <laughs> they, need to, they need to keep doing it because this is number one they this they is, do uh... a lot of stuff behind the scenes that you don't know about like almost every yeah. indie release they've had some involvement with in in some way um, particularly ian because he's kind of like um the consultant if you will so any any indie developers that have questions he's the guy to go to yeah no it's so, nice. bless these yeah. guys yeah bless you know bless them and bless them they're in the, in the in the community for keeping this going and you know we all appreciate yeah. it and i think everyone's really going to love this this issue of say again i'm going to mention it again just just get out there and and what's and, the magazine uh, sega powered sega powered, powered <laughs> by sega yeah no, it's brilliant it's brilliant it's yeah. uh, you know it's such a great such a great um tribute to sega and i love it every, i look forward to every every issue so cool. and uh, thankfully i live in the uk so i can get it <laughs> i can God. get it yeah. way before way before everyone in germany sorry german listeners uh, viewers. <laughs> <laughs> 
Um, I'm going to Germany at the weekend, actually, so I can probably take a couple of things over if you need. Yeah. I'm going on easy jet. I'm going on EasyJet, so I'll have to... Actually, it might be more expensive if they charge me for, for baggage and that. I don't know. I'll give you the whole list of addresses and some boxes. You don't mind, do you? Just run the <laughs> I don't mind, mate. No, I'll do it, yeah, do it for okay. the love, mate. You know, this is what I'm here for. <laughs> we'll, have to get, we'll have to get over there ourselves at some point. I've got to do it. You know, take a couple... Just drive, road trip. Road trip. Yeah. Everyone get down there. Um, ever so slightly but, harder these days, unfortunately, but... Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. Anyway... Yeah, <laughs> good. We're gonna get a lot more stamps though. I do like getting my stamps in my passport. <laughs> yeah, go, Wee! okay, that's now, true. Boom. That's true. There you go. But, um, gentlemen, it was fantastic having you yeah, for you. this chat. Um, I'll say goodbye to Daniel first. Good luck, mate. I think you know, thank you guys you. are doing some great stuff. Um, you know, keep on, keep on fighting the good fight, getting these games yeah. out there. Um, and yeah, we wish you all the yeah. best. I don't know if you want to say sort of something to our viewers slash listeners before you go. Uh, basically, thanks for watching. Um, <laughs> hopefully, you, you you like what we've said and what we stand for. Um, and if you want to see more about what we do, um, best place is to check us out on our website, which I'm sure is going to be in all the in description. the description. All and in the you, description. And if you're watching on TV yeah. and can't see the description, <laughs> wavegamestudios.com. Wavegame Studios, so easy. Wavegamestudios.com. Nice there you yeah. go, guys. There you go. But um, so yeah, have a great evening, Daniel. So we'll say bye bye to you, sir. See you later. Dean, here we are Hello. again, sir. Here we are again. Um, yeah. you know, I think Sega Power is fantastic. I think it's all going great. Um what's your sort of plan for the future can you drop us any kind of tidbits and things that are coming up uh well more discs basically but um we're, we're carrying on with the issues um we're going monthly we're desperately trying to make sure we put an issue out every month so that's what we're kind of working towards working hard towards um we've got a few things coming up we're going to be at an event called NerdCon. i don't know if you've okay. heard of that no that's in, that's no. in um, up near Manchester Way in Arcade Club in Bury. That's going to be on the 17th. I've heard of August. Arcade Club, of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, so one day, um, nine till nine in the morning till nine at night, kind of a real event. It's going to be talks and that kind of things. So we're going to be there. We're either going to be there. Um, but, we're, yeah, we're working on more discs. We don't know when exactly to be on them, but we've done one and it's worked relatively easily and it's, it's kind of, been really popular people, people seem to like it so we're definitely gonna do more of that um and it just just carrying on really just carrying on listening to people finding out what they want in the mag and hopefully trying to bring it to them that's it really it's been brilliant and, so and a couple, we're, we're kind of working on a couple of other things that i can't really say an awful lot about but you know there's other things in the pipeline as well all right all right we'll keep that under wraps um but Thanks, Dean. Thanks for joining us again. No, thank you. Um, and yeah, just um, obviously, viewers, listeners, check out Sega Powered. Links in the description. But yeah, Dean, have a good evening, sir. Cool. Thanks, Dylan. Take care. Take Bye. care, Dean. Viewers, listeners, um, Arcade Attack. Hope you've enjoyed the show. Um, you know, consider obviously if you're not on our social media channels, you know, following us, uh, liking our Facebook page, all the links down there. Um, even, you know, if you want to jump on a, a chat with us, um, we're now doing chats with our patrons. So yeah, please check out our patrons. Um, if you like what you do, um, well, like what you do. Yes. You probably like what you do. Um, if you like what we do, um, you know, please consider chipping in. You'll help us with, um, improving our equipment and sort of keeping, the blog and the videos and the podcast going so we'd really appreciate that um but yeah we hope um well i hope that you've enjoyed this show and yeah we'll see you again next time